Welcome to Parade Ice Garden for the third and final quarter final round game of the Section 6AA Girls Hockey Tournament. It's the number five seed, the Maple Grove Crimson, and the number four seed, the Wyzetta Trojans. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Dan Ficken. And Dan, a couple of teams that have had great years, a little bit different in terms of how they set up. Wyzetta started out so strong, had some struggles late in the late conference. Maple Grove, on the other hand, just blasting through the second half of the season, 10 straight wins coming in. Boy, you know, it has been. It's it, it, two and why is that? It's two and five now in the last seven games, but they were very strong throughout the season, and it's just been that conference fight that they have in the late conference. It's tough night in and night out. A lot of one goal games, small margins. Maple Grove, on the other hand, boy, I'll tell you what, all of a sudden, the second half of the season, they just exploded. They got 10 in a row. Uh, they've done well. They beat the actually they beat the conference champion, um, and they're coming in here very hot. In fact, right now I think they're the number one seed as far as I'm concerned. Watching them play. Now this is a, a very difficult section, but I think really, a lot of years you couldn't say this, but any of the top five teams you could see coming out of this section. A lot of times a four and five game that might not be the case, but I believe either one that wins this could win this section. Absolutely, they're both well disciplined, well coached teams that are strong top to bottom and especially from the pipes out. So they get good defense, play on a little bit different way they attack it. Maple Grove will beat you five on five. They're a very good five on five team and they stay out of the box. Why is that on the other hand, good special teams, very good special teams. If you get in the box against them, they're going to make you pay on it. It's a little bit different way of they getting there, but they both can get there. Tell you about key players to keep an eye on in this one, starting with Maple Grove. Abby Larson is a, a junior who's really come on strong. They've been able to put some pucks away. She's one of the girls who's gotten it done. Yeah, and then this is where in the power play, she's done very well, too. She has five assists on the power play throughout the year. Good leader, very steady. You'll notice her a lot. She supports well, has more assists and goals right now, I believe. 35 points. But she's a real leader. She's going to lead this young team, and it's a young Maple Grove team. These juniors have stepped up. And for YZ, one of their veteran players, Caitlin Klein's had a good career and uh, hoping to keep it going for another day here with a good performance today. Oh, God. you know, Caitlin's a motor. She's just a motor. You'll see her flying all over the place. She's got 46 points, five power play goals. She steps up when you need it. But I'll tell you what, you'll notice her all over the place. She's a disruptor. She's a good leader. She knows what to do with the puck, and she sets up her teammates. Does that very, very well. So she's, she'll be fun to watch. Wyzetta won two to one when they played in the regular season. Maple Grove says we're a different team now, and they come in very confident in this one. The winner gets Hopkins in the semis. It is the Crimson and the Trojans up next here on 12 Sports. hazard out here today think again the spot you missed could be a killer that spot on your skin could be skin cancer if you're a man over 50 you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer including melanoma the kind that kills one person every hour that's why your best shot is to check for a spot it's easy follow through and check your skin go to spotskincancer.org to find out how a message from the american academy of dermatology Welcome back here to Parade Ice Garden. What should be a great quarterfinal matchup here. You see the records very similar. Wyzetta with a win over Maple Grove might have been possibly the deciding point between the four or five seeds. And also I'm sure that uh, you know, playing in the lake, you're getting the vote from Minnetonka and Hopkins in that seeding, I think mixed in there a little bit yeah. too. Although you do also have North Metro and Armstrong Cooper from the Northwest Suburban. So eh, bottom line is you got to win three games in a row against good teams anyway, and I don't know that it matters all that much when all is said and done, but these teams, uh, both both teams, I think, had some goaltending decisions to make in this one here. Paige Marcy, the senior, gets the call in net for Wyzetta. You see, she didn't play a ton of games this year for the Trojans, but uh, 
great save percentage and uh, strong goals against. And at the other end, uh, Brianna Blessy split time with Coco Francis. And uh, Blessy gets the call here today. 1.50 goals against, also over 90. We are underway. Wyzetta in white, Maple Grove in black. Should be a dynamite matchup here in this quarterfinal round game. Floated toward the net. Blessy able to direct that one to the corner here for the Crimson. Now here's an opportunity early on and a shot just wide from Sophia Shaver there for Wyzetta. Shaver controlling it, bringing it to the front, chopped at there. Now Larson up with it for the Crimson. Controlled here by Katie Josephson and then taken away. Trojans right back the other way. Shaver. Penalties and how many are taken by whom and by and when, Dan, are going to be important in this game. There's a lot of a lot of intensity. I expect this to be a fairly physical game. It probably will be. And as you said, why is that a boy? I'll tell you what, they make their special teams count. They're running at 46% on the power play, which is a phenomenal number, Jay. Usually 25% is considered a good number. Back out to the point. There's a shot. Marcy having to make a pad save there on the Bailey Wentz. Try from out high. Also seeing a couple pretty deep teams. Taylor Wente putting it out front. Here's a chance to do it. And Marcy makes a phenomenal save early on. Maple Grove making a bid to get on the board less than a minute and a half in. And you see Summers all alone in front. Takes her time and Marcy just gets the glove on that one. Didn't quite get the puck lifted as much probably as Summer would have liked there. Uh, it was still a phenomenal save. Thibodeau went to one side, came back to the other side. I mean, Paige Marcy made a tremendous save there. And this is where we talked too earlier in, in the pregame, Jay, that five on five, Maple Grove has been beating people quite consistently. That's the strength of their game and all five are working together. Dumped on into the UIZ zone and it's an icing call as the Crimson didn't quite get to the center line. There's a look at Becky Wacker, the Trojans head coach. In fact, both of these coaches took over their programs in the same year and uh, good battle shaping up here. Put out front. Each of these teams, kind of interesting, each of these teams has a win over the number one seed Hopkins, which they would would play in the, uh, the winner plays in the semifinals. Now, Wyzetta also lost a game to Hopkins as well. They split in the, and uh, Maple Grove beat Hopkins in OT right at the end of the regular season. So Trojans controlling here with Becca Senden, a strong defenseman, but had a poke check there by Larson. Flip back to the Maple Grove line, giving chase there is Tina Campa, the talented freshman defender. Klein able to come up with this one for Wyzetta. Back out to the point, kept alive there in the zone by Natalie Heising. Campa trying to come up with it and picked up instead by the Trojans, Heising. Klein circling to the front, Klein to the back end, now turns, fires forehand, and Blessy makes the save, and Maple Grove couldn't clear. Now a centering pass, and Blessy able to pounce on that one as Wyzetta having a solid shift, and there's a look at Rob Potter, the Crimson head coach in his fourth season. It took Coon Rapids to a state tournament. There's a blast that goes wide. Well, both coaches, did, Jay will agree, have done a remarkable job with these programs, and they're doing it with youth. They uh, really have a freshmen and sophomores are playing heavily throughout both these lineups here and uh, are being very successful. They're the four and five seeds, and going to make some very interesting brackets here as the section moves on. Flip back out to center, Maple Grove right back to the Wyzetta line and then Sammy Meister sending it ahead, but that's gonna be an icing call as again, you see players you know, wanting to be quick with the puck and at times maybe rushing a little <laughs> bit in, in a situation like that, didn't, didn't wait till they, she was to the red line and dumped it on for an icing. Well, I think we saw a lot of that in the first game too. Just, this is the first section game, you know, they're probably gripping them sticks a little tight right now, probably taking them about a half a period or a period to settle down, start playing their game again. They're young, so 
This might be a new experience for a number of them. Back out to center here, Riley Norman getting it ahead, and then the pass there from Rose now deflects into the corner. Senden back to play it there for Wyzetta. Looking around to Paige Sorensen. Crimson able to keep it in, but now Senden gaining control. Breakout pass was tipped. And then that one deflects back into Maple Grove zone there. Riley Norman pursued there by Sorensen. They look to reverse it here, but pretty well read there and intercepted by Hannah Bangan. Maple Grove will try again coming up there right side. But, and now puck gathered up by Haley Herdeen. Herdeen just had it roll away. Pass over oh. the ball. Maple Grove's on the board. Larson buries it off a great effort by Herdeen. Slid it underneath Marcy. And it's 1-0 Crimson. Hello, hockey fans. My gosh, you couldn't have drawn that up any better than what you just saw. What a beautiful play. Look at this pass. Right on a stick to Abby Larson, and she just buries it. What a nice play for her 18th goal and gets the Crimson off to a good start here with a 1-0 lead over the Trojans. But what a beautiful play there. There's one thing you'll notice about the Crimson here. One thing they do very well, Jay, is they move together as a unit and they support each other very well. Perfectly timed pass, and boy, Herdeen, it's almost like one assist doesn't seem like enough on that one as she really did a lot of the work on that one, and Larson got right to the uh, scoring spot in front. So, Wyzetta bringing it into the Crimson Zone as they're changing up behind a 1-0 Maple Grove lead on Larson's goal from Herdeen. Trying to fight her way off the wall there. Now put out front, and that one's off the crossbar. Puck still loose. Blessy lost her stick as she scrambled back into position. Still doesn't have her goal stick. Opportunities out front there as alone was Heising, but couldn't get it on net. And now knocked down, and right back the other way comes Maple Grove here with Taylor Wente going to the goal. Wente hits the outside of the net as she was hooked down a little bit there. This is going to be one heck of an intense hockey game, Dan. It looks like we're going to see 51 <laughs> minutes of back and forth. And right, it's the interesting fact here, you know, with these two teams, they both have goals against averages of less than two, 1.58 and 1.6 for both teams, and there won't be a lot of scoring in this game, it looks like. Or at least chances, certainly, oh the way, it, way it's going so far, no doubt. Now Carly Noble firing, and that one goes just wide. Not, here's an opportunity for Shaver. That one hits the outside of the net. Wyzetta coming on strong these last couple of shifts and did everything but score a moment ago, hitting the crossbar, and then the puck was loose in front. They just couldn't quite direct it on in. And this one will pop free out to center, but Larson just regathers and goes again here for Maple Grove. Five defenders back, and Larson still got away a quality chance. Marcy the save. Now played down to the corner. Larson dropping it back, looking for a Look return. That. That. Nice give and go. But why is that able to cover up defensively? Back to the line, but not out. Izzy Shannon up with it for Wyzetta, trying to reverse it around. They do get it at yeah. least out to center. That was a nice reverse, Jay. There was a lot of pressure on They turned that around nicely, and now they're going back on offense. Paige Sorensen will float a long one. Blessy gloves that one. And we'll hang on. Here's a look at this opportunity. Watch it go right off the crossbar right there. And then there was still an opportunity. Watch this next one. Comes right out front again, and he just couldn't quite get the shot away. It was Heising. She's the one who hit the crossbar. Blessy was just at first was caught, you know, do I grab my stick or do I not? And she tried to, didn't quite get it, and then was lost without it for a moment. But 
it all worked out in the end for Maple Grove. Well, that's the defense's responsibility. They got to pick up the stick for your goalie. You don't have to let her. She's got to worry about stopping the puck and staying in the net. But both teams a little sloppy in front of their nets here right in the beginning for as good as defensively these teams are. I get the feeling that they're both really jacked up, which is good in a lot of ways, but at yeah. times it's leading to some mistakes, too. That one bounces past Blessing into the corner. Now the return behind Moisetta getting things set up deep in the offensive zone. Nice little spin move there. Coming out front is Heising. Here's her shot. Blessing the save. And then it's pushed back into the pads of Brianna Blessy, the Crimson goaltender. They got really two young goalies that are good in their program. Coco Francis has played a lot for them as well. Ninth graders, they're not even at the high school yet. Yeah, I'm just wondering though, you know, that we were surprised by the choice by both coaches on their, their goalies. You know, just looking at the records. I mean, they both have good numbers, but yet, um, Aren't really the stalwarts, so we'll see if maybe that backfires on one of them. Flip down the rink here. Noble sending it around. Nice breakout here, right up the middle. Oh, here we go. Wolfman walking in alone, and she scores. Why is that a ties it up? Maddie Wolfman. The sophomore winger coming in, just makes a nice move there, pulls it back, makes it in, just pulls it across to the left, right-hand side and puts it in the net. Nice play. I just, you know, I gotta be honest, I didn't expect this. That was kind of a sloppy move by both, by the defense on Maple Grove, and I'm seeing a little bit of sloppiness defensively on both teams, and that kind of surprised me because they're usually really solid. So, but nice play by Wazetta, back in this game, 1-1. Shaver and Noble get the assist on that goal by Wolzman. For Wolzman, it is her seventh of the year. Ooh. Get another good look here. Very nice, came in real tight, got some separation and protected the puck with her body from that stick and made a really nice move. Moved to the left, let her see it and then brought it back to the right after she got Blessy down. Yeah, re really well executed all the way. That There was not a lot of room to sneak that pass into her no. to start it out, and then she did a good job of being strong on the puck while accelerating through there, too. I, see, I just love this section. I mean, there's some really good hockey teams here. We're watching some really fun hockey. Like I said, the intensity in this one's a little bit cranked up more. Yeah, it sure feels a lot different than the previous game we saw with Minnetonka Armstrong Cooper. Yeah. There's... Well, hey, there's more people, and, and, they're, <laughs> and they're loud. And I think both of these teams came in, you know, feeling confident. They're two big schools, big communities that, that uh, you know, think they had a good chance to win this one. And so great opportunity for both, and one-to-one uh, -one is our score. It's been tons of action in the early going here. Klein trying to work her stick free as she gets back up. Going to the center, trying to pull the trigger, and it's going to be a penalty against the Crimson. As caught with her stick in the middle there was Sydney Hansen, and she's going to go to the box for a hook. Well, we'll see it out front here. They're just good pressure, good pressure, but that stick's got caught up there and pulled her down. We talked about this before. We didn't. This is a situation Maple Grove does not want to be into with the way the Wayzata power play and has been working this year. It's it's a phenomenal power play. Uh, they're going to have to kill this one off. Trojans looking to get things started up on the power play here. Abby Kroll carrying it, but oh, a swing and a miss, and then Wolzman. <laughs> Maybe didn't realize how much time she yeah. had there. I think she <laughs> wanted to surprise Blessy by shooting it quick, and she didn't get much on it. Big swing and a miss here defensively for Maple Grove, and then Wolzman decided she was going to go quick with the shot there, and Blessy was ready. 
It was right in her crank house, too. She could have ripped it, but again, she sort of stepped in, like I said, got her head up a little bit and see what was around her, but they win the face off and maintain control. Tried to put it out front, and that was a nice block initially there by Boonstra, and then they get to clear. So Wyzetta will have to start again from their own zone as Senden starts it up ice. And off target with that pass. Crimson able to gain control and ultimately hammer it down ice. Long breakout pass ahead there for Bangen and they'll tip it into the zone. Gathered up there by Bailey Went. Bangen though able to free it up. Leave it for Sorensen, or Klein that was left it for Sorensen. Now the long one directed to the corner. Picked off by the Crimson, but they can't get it out. Centering pass here, open chance, and Blessy Ooh. scooping that Ooh. one up off the ice as they got it out front to Klein. Uh, D slipped down and back. You'll see her go down right there, which left nobody in front. You see the Trojan, and then if Blessy hadn't picked that up, another Trojan was coming there to bury it, number 15. So that was a critical save right there. Yeah, really, I think in, in hindsight, it was more of a pass than a shot, but it could have went in either way. Yep. It's good vision there by Blessy. Sometimes it, as a goaltender, you intercept, you know, don't let that next opportunity be created. Mm -hmm. You take your chance and grab it. Yep. Down to five seconds to go in the power play here for Wyzetta. Brought back into the Trojan zone. So Crimson back to full strength. Puck comes back out to center. And sent back into the Wyzetta zone. Abby Kroll chasing it, but the Crimson get there first. Thibodeau's pass out front. And a little flip doesn't quite make it there. Kroll battling for it, but the Crimson strong. Able to come up with it. Thibodeau trying to put it out front. That hits a body. Now a slap oh. from the point and a nice block coming out by Wolfsman. He scores goals and block shots. <laughs> man, oh man, was that a beautiful block. Klein getting it to the line, but the Crimson able to pick it up there. Laney Baldwin sending it ahead. Race for it in the corner. Dan, I think we're really seeing what we knew about these teams, but yeah. it's becoming an evidence more with the fact, too, that you've got three good lines. You're not, you know, a lot of hockey games you're seeing, you see, like, a first line that dazzles you, a second one that's okay, the third one kind of looks like slow motion, but you don't really <laughs> notice a big difference for either of these teams. No, no, you don't. They're both, all three lines on both teams are skilled. They can move. They know what to do with the puck. Um, it's, it's fun to watch. I'm just enjoying this up and down. Under three minutes to play now in the first period. Blessy clears it over to the corner. Crimson able to get it out, and there has been plenty of physical play, too. Both teams are strong. Well, for as young as they are, the skating ability of both teams is really good, and it's all the way through the lines. Every one of them can skate. Crimson unable to get it out, and there have been times when they've been you know, a little bit lax in terms of being able to clear the puck. And that's knocked down, and here's Blessy having to make a glove save on Lindsay Zach there. I think Maple Grove, you know, you, you like to be confident in carrying the puck out, but there have been times when it's cost them. Well, Wyzette is a very quick team. Number two, they're bigger. And I, th in some cases we've watched already, that size is making a little bit of difference. Oh, Blessy a save, and then Shaver couldn't pull the trigger on the rebound as she was being hooked at. She had basically half an open net. Yeah. Blessy had lost the stick again here. Now Shaver spun down. It's not going to be for the faint of heart out there. Obviously, there'll <laughs> be. I mean, there's going to be some penalties called, but but there's a lot of physical stuff, and you're going to have to play through it. And you know, you hope you get a penalty, but you can't be out there hoping and not concentrating on just playing through it. 
Here's a long drive. Blessy making the save on Kroll. Kroll fighting for it in the corner. Get some support here. You know, Jay, I think any coach will tell you right now, is let the kids play. If the penalty doesn't, you know, take away from a golden opportunity, if it's a good play, even though it's physical, you just let it go. Let the kids play. Stay out of it. And any coach will tell you, they, they're fine with that. Knocked back into the crimson zone here as the wall-to-wall -wall chances have kind of slowed a little bit late in the period. It would have been hard to keep that pace up. Now an opportunity going to the net. And it squirts away with never a shot really being taken there by Klein. And now it rolls back into the Wyzetta zone. Gibbito giving chase, but lining or knocked away. And now Klein working back hard the other way. Klein bumped there hard by the Crimson with uh, Baldwin. Ooh. Blessy making a reach out there and just missed it. That could have been a big problem. Tried to get the pass out front. Wyzetta cycling it down low here late in the period. About 20 seconds to go here in this first period. Floated to the front again. Opportunity there. And Blessy had to make a save on uh, Bangham. Early in the period, I thought Maple Grove was getting slightly the better of it. Definitely Wyzetta late though. To the corner it goes, and into the official skate. That's going to about do it for our first period. And it was every Ooh. bit as intense as we thought it would be. Our score after one is Maple Grove 1, Wyzetta 1. First period highlights, and then plenty more hockey coming up here on 12 Sports. Oh, hey, bud. Where, uh, where are you headed? Uh, just going to hang out. With Gary and Todd? Yeah. I've been meaning to ask you, is there any drinking going on in this crowd? No. If any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promised your dad you wouldn't. I'd do anything to keep you safe. OK, I will. I hope this is working. I promise. Love you too, Dad. They really do hear you. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Welcome back here to Parade Ice Garden for the Section 6AA Girls Hockey Tournament quarterfinal action. The number five seed Maple Grove and the number four seed Wyzetta tied at one after a very intense first period. Another look at this great save early on by Paige Marcy for the Trojans. And plenty more chances. This one she cannot get as Abby Larson buries the great feed there from Haley Herdeen and Maple Grove. Takes a one nothing lead about four and a half minutes in. Wyzetta buzzing the net. Here's a little chip that goes off the crossbar by Heising. And they will, this time they do convert as Wolzman gets it in on a breakaway. Great move, goes to the backhand, protects the puck with her leg and puts it away. Trojans late in the period, really started to put a lot of pressure on. And Blessy having to make a save there. And they weren't quite able to put the rebound away. And we get a look at our stats. Why is that out shooting Maple Grove? The period leaned their way more and more as it went on later. And a little bit better to the scoring chance. It's just one penalty taken. It was by Maple Grove's Hanson, and not much happened on the power play for the Trojans. We'll be back for period number two here at Parade Ice Garden. A young hockey fan, hopefully enjoying things so far here. One to one, Crimson and the Trojans here on 12 Sports. Brooklyn Park Church received some unwelcome visitors this past weekend. Volunteers really do have their work cut out for them. They'll be inspecting 23,000 residential lots in city boulevards. The problem began when the railroad decided to increase the train's speed. In the process, they had to raise a portion of the track over here. Fire crews got a call around 4 Friday morning from a passerby alerting them to a deck fire. This time, a little mob for Winnicky trying to go up and get it. Touchdown! We have a job to do out here today. 
To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. Looks like a lot of work's going into this. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? And welcome back here to Parade Ice Garden. Good crowd on hand here for the Crimson and the Trojans. Girls hockey, both teams, 17 wins coming in this year and had very strong seasons. Uh, only one of them can move on, though. The winner gets Hopkins in the semifinals on Wednesday, right back here at Parade. And new this year, the finals in this section will be at Ritter Arena rather than here at Parade. So they go for women's home rink will be in use for the section championship here in this high-powered section six tourney. The home of your University of Minnesota Golden Gophers. Nice rink, be a great reward for the kids who get to that championship game. It's a wonderful place to play, but I'm looking for adjustments here, Jay. I think that tight, they're gonna have to tighten the D in front of both nets here. I'm pretty sure both coaches talked about that, so we'll see if that tightens up. And we're underway in the second period as Wyzetta lifts it into the Maple Grove zone. Riley Norman back to play it there, knocked away from her. Shaver hustling in, collides with Norman. That breakout pass knocked free, and Senden will come back to get it here for Wyzetta. Getting it ahead to Noble. Knocked away, though, right back into the Wyzetta zone. Senden picking it up. Hits the official skate. And offside there as the teams will get a chance to make a quick line change here early on in this second period. Thought really Maple Grove came out flying down, played very well early, but later in the period, Wyzetta was definitely having the better of things. Yeah, we're getting their offensive system down. They got the puck buried down deep in the Maple Grove zone and were just frankly out muscling the uh, smaller Maple Grove D, and they're gonna have to be aware of that. Floated into the Trojan zone here. Now lining her up with it. Lifting it to the middle or quickly intercepted by Wente. Hanson carrying it on for Maple Grove. Pushes it behind the Trojans net. Trying to kick it on out of there and it's sent back deep. Izzy Shannon first to it for Wyzetta, leaving it there for Sarah Iyer. Lining her tipping it out to center and Maple Grove will regroup and go here. Baldwin's pass knocked down. Klein trying to come up with that. Dan, you made a good point in the, you know, between periods that both of these teams actually play on Olympic rinks during the season and then come into what feels like a much smaller, is a much smaller ice surface here at Parade. So obviously a little bit of adjustment in, in both regards and I think it possibly might be hurting Maple Grove more just because they're a little smaller but have real good speed. But they can't avoid that, that physical hit like they could, let's say in their own rink or Wyzetta's rink. I think the other part too, it changes your angles a lot, especially oh defensively. <laughs> That one Hello. took a bad bounce and nearly went in the net. Blessy was headed out to the corner to cut it off. Oh, oh. And a tip. Blessy making a great save there on the redirection by Heising. Wyzetta buzzing right now. Wolzman waiting for some help there. Turns and plays it as there's a loose stick right along the wall there. And back out to center. Senden will grab it here. Senden. Carrying it up the middle. Talented offensive defenseman here. Senden circling around for the Trojans. Has trouble with the puck there. I think there might be a wet spot or two early in this period from the Zamboni. Here's a quick shot and a goal! Wyzetta goes up two to one. Boy, number six, Carla Noble of Wyzetta was right in the grill here in front of the Maple Grove net. Nice nice shot here, and we'll see. Look at number six right there, right in the grill, and all of a sudden, Blessy 
I think it distracted her. Oh, and we're gonna see a goaltending change here for Maple Grove as Coco Francis is going to replace Blessy after that goal. Okay, I, I wanna, I will address that in a minute. I wanna talk a little bit about that here. Let's see if Maple Grove can rebound here. Tipped ahead, the race is on. Here's another opportunity. Sorensen will get the goal from Shaver. Centering pass there, and Francis got her stick on that one. So Noble didn't actually get a piece of the puck there, apparently, but was definitely uh, bothering the netminder Blessy out front. And now they make a switch and goal. And here come the Trojans, the but Klein was just. They were just off. Here's another look. Watch Sorensen will throw it at the net here. And I couldn't tell for sure if Noble had gotten any piece of this one or not. It doesn't look at the position of where she's at. The she's in be she's on the goaltender. There's no Maple Grove defender in between her. And sometimes you'll make a goalie change like that to wake your D up, not necessarily your goaltender saying, gang, that's unacceptable. You cannot let an opposing player in on our net like that. So that might not, I don't, I'm not sure that's necessarily a, an indictment of Blessy. Pass broken up at center, and then they're unable to do anything with that turnover initially anyway. Now Campa spinning back the other way. Great skater. Look at Campa go. Not real big, but good with the puck. Great skater. Campa to the middle. Now a turnaround oh. try following it up there for Wenty. Wenty picks it up here. Back out to the point, Campa drives, stick save, Marcy, and then a big scramble on the rebound. And it will just be a face-off coming up in the zone. Dibito asking for a penalty there. And I think she had, a, had an argument there. Watch what happens here. Cross-check number 12 coming across right across, but good response by the Crimson here, Jay. They, they got it down in the zone. They got, got a good opportunity to score a goal. They need to put more pressure on the Wyzetta team in Wyzetta zone. Back out to center and possession regained here by Maple Grove, Claire McLean. McLean up with it here, but rubbed off that puck. Heising couldn't get out of there with it though. Both teams really come forward all the time on that forecheck. You're not seeing anybody with a lot of time to make decisions with the puck, that's for sure. Heising a shot, and Francis will make the save here for Maple Grove. Well, this was at a line here of Heising and Screw, the one that scored the first goal, is just, they've been very good all night. They relieved the pressure, no zone got down and created an opportunity down in the Maple Grove zone. They've been effective all night for the Trojans and Coach Wacker. Oh. Pass tipped and never made it up the middle of the ice there as Wyzetta choked it off nicely. Flipped around now to Tippy Hill for Maple Grove. Hill trying to hack it out of there, but it doesn't work. Now they pass down low, bounces free to the other side. Noble getting there for Wyzetta. Try to go back to the point to send it. It's knocked loose, and now a chance the other way for Maple Grove. Josephson, though, knocked away. Send him. Good recovery. Gets it to Noble. Tried to hit Shaver, but she didn't see it coming. Nice defensive play by the Trojans there. That could have turned into a real opportunity, and they just stopped it cold. And it'll be a hand pass for Maple Grove. 11 09 to play in this middle period. Wyzetta has got the only goal of the period to take a two to one lead. And you see Blessy came out of the game after that second goal there for Wyzetta. And kind of uh, I don't, I, hard to not consider that a bit of a quick hook, I guess, but uh, you know, that's, that's the, uh, the, like Dan said, trying to change up things and let your D know that they weren't helping enough either. Yeah, it didn't really make you play better when you switch the goal. They put a cold goalie in, which means the defense has really got to step up a little bit, but it's hard. You know, you could tell on her face she's really disappointed and stuff. 
Centering pass there, and Bangin was tied up just enough to not be able to put that one on net. Leininger's pass floating out front. And Trojan's able to keep it in. Leininger looking to Bangin. Hannah Bangin fighting off a little stick check there. Now wheels to the front. Bangin trying to get a shot away, but good recovery to break it up there by Wente. Well, he said it's just got extra jump here, Jay. They, right now, frankly, they want it more. They, they're going after the pucks. They're winning the battles. And once they get them, boy, I'll tell you what, they know what to do with it. They're going right to the net. Their cycling is working good. Good strength on the puck there for Widla. Now trying to put it out front. Just tipped away there before uh, Lindsay Zach could get a shot. Here's Senden going strong to the net. And they wave it off. I think the puck winds up in the net, but the official waving that one away. Boy, Senden, I'll tell you what, really asserting herself. Big and strong coming in. Good save in the beginning, and then just the Trojans pushing in and never really crossed the line. Francis making a save and then used her left arm to shoulder that one out of there. Here's a quick shot. Senden again getting a good attempt away. Francis making the save there from April Gold. And a crucial time here for the Crimson. Why that is really uh, bottling them up and putting pressure on. That extra step and that extra weight. I'm, I'm seeing that strength of the Trojans right now I'm doing Maple Grove right now. Back into the Wyzetta zone it comes here and Zach trying to get it out of there and Zach <laughs> knocking Larson away and Rob Potter giving the official an earful feeling that it should have been a check or an interference. Sent back in and this will be icing coming up against Wyzetta. All right now Crimson have just got to get the intensity up like they had in the first period. They're getting beat one on one, especially competitively. They've got to get their legs moving and they got to start battling and winning some of those battles. Face off one by the Trojans back into the corner. Larson pulling it out of the pack and now put right up front. Marcy had to knock it away. Here's a shot, Whoa. and that one's blocked down, and the race is on the other way now. Meg Ransom on the move for YZ, and Francis is saved, and a rebound try knocked down. Another shot on goal from out high, and Francis making the stop there. YZ continuing to forecheck well, too, even after that initial rush was denied. Puck top three and behind the net, just bobbled there by Noble, but Izetta is winning a lot of these battles, as Dan said. In the corner, Trojans come away with it again. Heising try to get it to Noble. Shannon racing to the corner there. And then the pass floated right up the middle. Icing will be waved off as the puck slows way down here. Sorensen back to get it. No, we Shaver were. cutting in. Taken though by Thibodeau. Here's her shot blocked. Well, we were talking in between periods too about the size and strength that Wyzetta has the advantage over Maple Grove, but I'm seeing they might, Maple Grove might have to change and bring their wings down low to help defensively to get two people on the puck in the corners down low because Wyzetta's ruling down low in the Maple Grove zone. Now the Crimson trying to set up shop and get some things done down low. Here's a shot. Marcy making the save on the long wrister by Campa. And then thrown out of the zone by the Trojans. This is going to be a rolling puck. It'll get there, I think, for icing. Yes. So good little shift there for Maple Grove to try and get the tide turned back their way a little bit. Two to one lead for Becky Wacker and the Wyzetta Trojans so far. A lot of hockey to go, though. Seven minutes plus remaining here in the middle period. Oh, this is the Wyzetta team I, I've kind of known and respect now. When they when they start getting that hunger, by God, it's it's like a hungry dog on a meaty bone. They really go after you. Klein putting it out front there. Leininger got a piece of it, but it was well defended. Now comes back out to center. 
They joust for it right in front of the Trojans bench. And flipped on into the zone by Bailey Went here for Maple Grove. Again, a lot of physical play throughout the game. Really just the one penalty is all we've had, but mm -hmm. there's been definitely a lot of body contact throughout. And quite frankly, why is getting the better of it in most occasions. They fight for it in the corner and here. That should have been a penalty right there. Ooh, and a dangerous chance along from a shallow angle. Now we do have a penalty coming up against Wyzetta. Here's a slapper Ooh. by Larson, and that one went high and wide, and now the Trojans get possession, and we'll have our penalty called, and then a collision after the whistle there, too. Get a, get a holding call coming up against uh, Wyzetta's Lindsey Sack. And there almost could have been another minor there on sending for that little extra in the corner there. So you're right, Jay, and this, is, this has definitely been to Wyzetta's advantage. They know how to use their bodies, and they've been getting physical. They're going to have to feather it a little bit, though. They don't want to be in the box. They got a one-goal lead. Play smart now. So important for them to kill that off. Keep Crimson from getting any momentum. And sent on out, Noble able to relay it down the rink. Shaver giving hard chase here for Wyzetta. Tampa up with it for the Crimson, turn back, forced to turn back there. Thibodeau's pass is a little off target and Sorensen will rifle it down. Ooh, Francis a head high catch on that one. There we go, the freshman using her head, just settling things down and getting a good look at the ice. Tampa, hard up the right side, kicks it to her stick, throws it behind the net, down she goes. There we Penalty go. coming up again. Paige Sorensen's gonna go for interference. And Maple Grove will have a two player advantage. For a minute and 10 seconds. It's a long time. Could be a big turning point in this game right here. And Coach Potter getting everybody together to tell him just to settle down now and start using your heads, moving the puck around a little bit. They got a little, you're right, Jay, they're a little off their game. They were trying to force the issue and then weren't using their heads, setting it up. But we'll see the play by Campa coming in and she just gets railed down. Crimson with it and Noble able to knock it away. Flip back into the Wyzetta zone. Hammered off the glass and down the rink by Abby Kroll. Huge power play slash penalty kill here. Five on three for Maple Grove and for a good share of time too. Pass comes across and the look back. Coming out high with it there to Herdeen. And Trojans able to get there and cleared down the rink by Shaver. Herdeen a little trouble with it. Shaver interrupting that rush. Knocked in two players and here comes Shaver on a short-handed breakaway. Shaver hits the pipe and then covered up by Francis. It did not go in. Oh my goodness, that would have been enormous there. Maple Grove, a collision at center, and Shaver gets a breakaway on a five on three shorthanded and almost beats Francis, but just ran out of room. It might be well worth it right now for Coach Bonner to call a timeout. He needs to get his team settled down. They're just, right now mentally, they're kind of breaking down quite a bit, Jay. First penalty is over. It's now five on four. Crimson looking to get their power play set up. Here's the trailer coming in, and that one knocked away. Then it's into the body of Marcy, and she's able to hang on. Wyzetta got a little bit lax in front of their own net. When that puck came out front, somebody had a chance to just clear it to the corner, and they tried to stick on a little bit, and that's not what you want to do right here. Yeah, you gotta be quicker getting rid of that. Heising just couldn't get the handle. 
a half minute to go in the Maple Grove power play. It was a five on three, now five on four. Oh, and Wyzetta unable to get it out there despite a great chance. That might cost him. Back out. Here's Summer Thibodeau dropping it down. Wendy looking for an opening. Back out top. Try to put it down low here. Senden wins the battle for that puck. And Senden's going to rocket it down the ice, and they have killed it off. Sorensen fresh out of the box, charging after it. Oh Sorensen comes up with it. Puts it out front and just misfired there. Then Shaver's pass intercepted. Well, we'll see what that does to the momentum of this one as Maple Grove had a five on three. Why is that able to kill it off? Crimson, though, now an opportunity with the puck. Long one there. They look for the tip. It goes wide. And it ends up on the back of the mesh there. So we'll get a whistle. 2.40 to go here in this second period. And... I don't think there's been any 30 second stretch the whole game where it hasn't been intense out here, Dan. Everybody's flying around. Oh my gosh, I tell you what, the, the, the penalty did well for Maple Grove in the fact that it just relieved some pressure in their own zone. But, boy, that a, did a heck of a job killing off those, you know, the five on three especially. I mean, just good pressure, good smart position playing, just out battling Maple Grove when they made a mistake. Back out to the point, and that one goes into the corner. Taken by Shaver. Shaver floating a pass. Got away from Sorensen. Sorensen, though, knocked it down. Noble taking a shot, but that one is blocked by Norman. Tried to flood a pass up the middle. Intercepted here, and Francis has to make a quick glove catch on Lindsay's X rising shot there for Wyzetta with just over two minutes to play here in the second period. So Francis has come in and done a good job since uh, relieving Blessy here early in the second. But why is that? I, Jay is just uh, there down there inflicting their will upon Maple Grove. I mean, there's no question who wants the puck more. He's fighting for it harder. Why is that is playing mu with much more intensity and effectiveness than the Crimson are right now. It's not even close. Battle for it in the corner. And it'll pop free out front there, gathered up by Claire McLean. Broken up there, they'll swing it around, looking to go to Hansen. Up the middle with that one, it's tipped. Maple Grove trying to force a mistake here. They put it out front, and that one knocked away. Hansen up with it. Back across, here's a shot. Marcy gets a piece of that. There's tons of traffic in front. Marcy trying to get untangled from all the bodies. And now Klein getting that pass ahead. Here comes Bangham. Under a minute to play in the second period. Klein able to knock that one down. Fighting for it in the corner. Try to get it back to Klein there was Wolzman, but sent ahead by the Crimson. This will be an icing call. And we'll come back into the Maple Grove zone. Well, considering everything, Jay, right now, Crimson ought to be happy. They're only down by one goal because this has been a Trojan period, period. I mean, they have dominated, done a tremendous job of putting pressure on, forcing their physicality on the Crimson and creating better opportunities. I mean, it really stopped them with the two penalties, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it, there were a couple more that certainly almost went in that could have and would have, you know, changed the complexion. You think of that shorthanded mm -hmm. breakaway, especially. Oh, yeah. That just about was a goal, but not quite. So Maple Grove, yeah, they're in a spot where even though they've been outplayed, they're definitely right there. Here's Thibodeau a shot. Oh, and Marcin oh. And there it is. The rebound goal ties it up. Just what we we're talking about. They're very much right there still and able to pump it in with the rebound. <laughs> nice play, I'll tell you what. Thibodeau again coming in, making a nice play, getting it on net. The rebound came out. Ooh, number three just buried it, of course, got hit pretty hard afterwards, but nice play. I, Lauren Kaufman will get that goal. The, Shows you the quick strike capability. 
of the, of the Crimson here, and all of a sudden tie game in the last minute. And boy, you just hate giving up a goal in the last minute. Wow. Thibodeau and Hill get the assist on the goal by Kaufman. So you get another look at it following it up. And then very oh, late hit uh, there on her as well. Could have very easily been a penalty. For 19, Meg Ransom coming in a little extra. I'm wondering if that's are they're putting are they putting extra time on the clock. I think they're gonna go to 21 seconds. Right now it's at zero, which obviously is not not correct. Yep, 21 is what they'll put. Yep. So Maple Grove getting one late here, trying to go into the third period all even up. Right at the blue line, Thibodeau stopped and there it just came out to their offside. Well, Coach Potter right now has just got to be going, I must have done something right this week at some time just to be able to have this thing tied up right now, but by no right should they be. But again, they got some quick strike capability and oh my. Shaver trying to go to the net here late. Francis dives out to knock it away. And the period will come to an end. So Maple Grove getting one late to tie things up, even though YZ had the better of things for most of that mm -hmm. period. Our score after two, Crimson two, Trojans two. It should be a great third period, and it's up next on 12th floor. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. If you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Great hockey game so far here. Maple Grove scoring late in the second to even it up at two to two. Let's look at our second period highlights here from Parade Ice Garden and starting with Paige Sorensen putting one on net here. They had Noble out front. Sorensen ended up getting credit for that goal for YZ. And they took a two to one lead. Marcy being called on to make a big save here. Wyzetta Senden going strong to the net here, got the shot away and then pile up of bodies right out front. And uh, here's one that Maple Grove, this one would have been one to forget if it had gone in. They collide and then a shorthanded five on three breakaway there, but not quite able to tuck it in with Sophia Shaver. And then Maple Grove gets one late. Thibodeau the shot on goal, save. And then the rebound just before she's blasted there, Lauren Kaufman. Putting it in for the Crimson, so our shots through two. Wyzetta has the edge, and in scoring chances, those two big penalties they took in that second period. It'll be interesting to see how things are called a little bit in the third. It's gotten very physical. Our score through two is two to two. The winner goes on to the semifinals in section six. The Crimson and the Trojans will decide things with our third period up next. Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't.
Take part. Get set for life. Two to two, our score as we get set for period number three here in the Section 6 AA quarterfinals. Maple Grove and YZ have had dynamite seasons, and one of them will come to an end today, and the winner will take on Hopkins in the semifinals. There you can look at Coco Francis, who came on early in the second period in relief of Brandon Blessy for Maple Grove in goal. Interesting, you know, the contrast right now. I mean, if, if you're Maple Grove, you're jacked up because you scored that goal late. On the flip side, you can't be particularly happy with the way the flow of the game went in that second period at all. Well, if, if I'm talking to him, I'm saying that was a bad period, kid. Sorry. Uh, you may be tied, but you played badly in period. you you got to decide that you got to want this game. And I think that's been the biggest difference. Was that had just done everything they had to, to win the game, win the one on one contest, and go after the puck. And Maple Grove's got to step it up. And if you're Wyzetta, you have to, you know, kind of fight the feeling of thinking, I can't believe we're tied because we've really outplayed them. Here's a chance for Shaver early on and missed it. Wide there as she tried to get Francis leaning the wrong direction. Shaver dropping it back for Noble. Trying to put it out front to Sorensen. Sorensen trying to get a shot away. Noble gets to it now. Shaver camped out front. They get it now to Shaver coming behind the net. Shaver very strong with the puck. You see that puck sticking to the ice here very early in the period after the Zamboni did its work. Shaver tipping it around the D, goes and gets it herself, putting it out front, and let's see, is it in? No. Underneath Francis, the official had a good long look at it there, and we lost sight of it, and I thought it might have snuck under Coco and in. She, she lost it. It got stuck in her pad, but she had no clue where it was. Notch it'll stick. You can see it right there oh, on yeah. top of it. And then that's kind of a quick, well, the backside referee couldn't see it, so yeah. I'm not going to say it's quick. And I have to admit, it was nowhere near as close to the line as I thought it might have been the first yeah. time. It was all the way out front of her pad there. Oh, now my. floated on into the Wyzetta zone by Herdeen. Back down it comes, chopped away from Herdeen. Herdeen dropping it over there, and a chance out front. Marcy sliding over. Now the Crimson having a good shift right here as they try and take the lead. They scored the first goal of the game. Now Klein coming up with it for Wyzetta. Dumps it on in. Francis stopping it there, but Klein is the first one to it. Caitlin Klein trying to work her way off the wall as she's pinned there by Herdeen. Klein on her knees, struggling forward there. Campa coming in to help out. Campa's hauled down. It's going to be a penalty against the Trojans. And Maple Grove will go on the power play as we get a holding call coming up here against Wyzetta. Well, it's a tough dilemma for the Trojans here because they... They are stronger physically, and and they need to, you know, to kind of play that way. But that's just not being very smart about it. They're going to start getting called on it. They're going to have to start using their heads a little bit more because sooner or later you get put in the box, puck's going to go in on you. So Maple Grove to the power play here. Thibodeau dropping it over on the left, and it gets away as they get. Noble chopping it down the ice. Thibodeau leading the rush up ice here for Maple Grove, but knocked loose and sent to center only, knocked down. And then taken, here comes a shorthanded chance for Wyzetta. Shaver, she scores! Wyzetta's back in front. Shaver had a shorthanded breakaway earlier and just missed. This time she makes no mistake. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Just a really bad turnover. And just takes it around and, and, and makes Maple Grove pay for it. Just a beautiful move. Beautiful play by Schaefer.
Unassisted goal there for Shaver, and she did a great job protecting the puck again with her body, like you said earlier on the Wolfsman goal, as she took a pretty mighty slash on the way to the net there, and it didn't phase her at all. So three to two wides out, but Maple Grove still with a lot of power play time to go here. A minute to go in the player advantage. McLean carrying it ahead here for Maple Grove. And then a centering pass, but nobody home on the other side. Here's a turnaround try. Wow, and that one tips into the corner. And cleared on out by the Trojans, and they'll quickly look to head off and change all four players here. Well, we talked about the specialty teams of YZ, and they, they've showed up today, especially the penalty kill. They killed a five on three in the second period, and here they got a shorthanded goal. Just really impressive there. See her coming on, see the chop there. My gosh, that should have been a penalty, obviously, but they made him pay by putting the puck in the back of the net, take a one-goal lead again. Off the draw now. Maple Grove able to come away with it. Josephson. Forced wide, but keeps possession. Drops that pass off to the point. Thibodeau faking the shot. Now across weak side, there was an opportunity there, but it was behind Paige Nasco. She battles with Shaver. Now out to Campa. That one hit a defender in front. Penalty time is now over. Wyzetta's back to full strength, but Maple Grove still putting pressure on. And then this one broke oh up as they went right into Sarah Iyer. And it's icing though against Wyzetta. I'm not sure if she didn't realize the penalty was over or didn't realize she wasn't quite to the center ice line there. And see Rob Potter, I know, uh, you know, felt obviously good about his team coming into this game, but, uh, they, you know, they've been outplayed today, but they're still right there. Well, they just, they're just really making some very silly mistakes, just bad decisions all the way around, giving up the puck and throwing it in the wrong place, uh, not getting their head up, and it's, it's costing them. Wyzetta trying to spring one there, but now it'll be Wolzman carrying it. Looking for Heising out front. It gets all the way through. Heising had it briefly there. Big collision on the boards, and Maple Grove coming back the other way with it with McLean, and down she goes. Centering pass here, knocked down. And now we get a stoppage. I think the net has come off. have a face off inside the Wyzetta zone here. Uh, I think the physical play too is, is affecting Maple Grove. I, they, I, I'm, their decision making process is they've made some really big mistakes here and, and I don't know if it's that they're young and they're in the sections you know as, as a factor at the beginning and but uh, it's costing them. Play down to the corner Josephson now they try and jam it out front Ooh, and that one goes just wide. Here's another centering pass. Knocked down, but Wyzetta can't clear. Shot goes wide. There's a lot of traffic out front again. Bodies hitting the ice on virtually every shot attempt. Trojans trying desperately to get it out of there. They send it back around. Josephson got there first, though, and she wins that puck. But then cleared, not out. This time they do kick it ahead. Klein trying to fight her way free. Nice step up there to break that one up by Meister. Battle for it along the wall here. Crimson able to chop it on out, and it's going to be an icing call against Maple Grove, so we'll come back into their zone. 11-10 to play here in the third, and a one-goal game. Why is that a leading at 3-2 to two as... Sophia Shaver's shorthanded goal has put them back in front. Rizetta wins the draw, but nice read to get to it there by Thibodeau. Now she will bank that pass ahead. A little too far for Kaufman. Kaufman scored that tying goal late in the second period to make it 2-2 heading in here into the third. I like the way Wyzetta also is holding the attack zone, too. They've stood up really well and pinched. I'm waiting for it to cost them, yet they haven't. They've been really good with doing that. Kaufman, a nice move, but couldn't get an angle for a shot there. 
Maple Grove looking to get things set up. Thibodeau fires and into the body of Marcy and she will cover it on up. Yeah, and that's another point too. A lot of times uh, Maple Grove is trying to be too fancy instead of just firing the puck, you know, they're trying to make that extra pass or trying to get it off to the sideboards a little bit more. And you know, when they just, you know, get a shot, well, that has been, not been shy at all about shooting the puck. Rose now trying to bring that one out front. I nice. do like Maple Grove, I do like it. Looks like they're playing with a lot more urgency here in this third period. I think they got that message that you just gotta step it up in terms of the effort. Wolzman putting it out front. It's off the side of the net. Couple players getting all tangled up. Francis was involved as well. And sent on into the YZ zone. Senden back to play it here. Able to work it over to Wolzman. And they lose it at center. Relayed right back out. And tipped ahead now here for Lindsay Zach. But she's run off the puck. Josephson back the other way. Klein takes that and sends it right back out to center. Dumped on in by Baldwin. Around the horn here to Leininger. It caroms up off the glass and out of play here. 9.35 remaining here in the third and a 3-2 score here for Wyzetta. You know, at 9.35, like I said, I'm wondering now Maple Grove, they've been very good about trying to carry it into the zone and try and set something up. They're going to probably have to dump it in and get it behind Wazetta's D a little bit more now and get two people on the puck uh, to ensure their forecheck gets more effective. Might be discussing face-off location here as that puck, it kind of caromed around off of two players and then out uh, uh, over the glass, and so they're ruling it when... Be coming outside the zone for the faceoff here. Crimson do win it and they get a chance to go right on the attack. Comes back to Thibodeau. Across. Campa trying to go weak side. A good idea there, but Klein dropped back in to uh, pick it off. But how many times do you do that, Jay, and not end up with a shot? I mean, it's, it's about time. Just take a few shots and see if that loosens it up and they come off you and you can make that kind of play. Right up the middle here. Kaufman putting a shot on. Marcy the save, the rebound rolling loose. She couldn't cover it. And Maple Grove getting opportunities here. Kaufman shooting, Marcy the save. A couple players tangled up away from the play. Both wanting a penalty on the other, I think, <laughs> as sometimes happens. Now Crimson, another opportunity out front. And a penalty coming up on Wyzetta as Wente went down. And it comes in on Marcy, and we'll have our fourth consecutive penalty on the Trojans. This will be a trip against Leininger. Well, there's no question in my mind. Definitely was a penalty, though. Lifted the legs up. Eight twenty-four, the time of the penalty to Leininger. So back on the power play goes Maple Grove. Another short-handed opportunity for Wysetti or the last time that you know, they burned the Crimson on it. So Crimson got to make this one count now. Here's a quick shot and Marcia stick save on that one. Maple Grove numbers down low. And this one. Knocked down by a high stick. Play will go on though as Wyzetta gets to it. Noble dropping the pass. Wow, they almost sprung Schaefer yep. shorthanded again. And then cleared in by Zek. And Maple Grove will regroup as Wyzetta changes up here. Racing it up is Herdeen. Herdeen circling the net. Camp out high, goes across to Herdeen. Josephson circling away. And Wendy tips that one wide. Couple players go down hard. Back out, Campa fakes the shot and then it goes down low. 
Here's Campa firing. Blocker saved there by Marcy, and Wyzetta is able to clear. Francis stopping as it rolls down into the Maple Grove zone. Thibodeau had a steam up ice. Half minute to go on the power play here for Maple Grove. Campa with it down to the circle. Wente shooting and Marcy gets a piece of that one. And then a hammer it out. Sorensen made a bid to take that one away, but Campa skates away from her with it. Well, I just love the way Wyzetta is just not shy about going after it. You know, even though you're a bit down in the end, they're extremely aggressive, and I just love it. I think that's the way you do a good penalty kill, and the numbers show it because they got great penalty kill numbers. So they've killed it off here. Back to full strength is Wyzetta. Rose now carrying it here for Maple Grove. And quickly knocked away and climbed back the other way. Klein playing it to the middle to herself. She shoots, and Francis got a piece of that. Klein goes down in the corner and might be a little shaken up. It's like a knee might have put her head into the boards a little bit or a stick, one of the two. You see right here is Klein battling for it. Hill and Klein doing over battle. Right yeah. So I think she might have just slipped and bounced her head on the ice a little bit. Good play by Klein there, boy. That was a serious offensive threat. I would expect all about six minutes you're going to see Rosetta dropping that puck inside the middle of the zone as much as I can. Carried ahead here by Herdeen. Pass getting over to the weak side here, Senden. And now floated into that corner. Paige Sorensen will be there first for Wyzetta. They dig for it along the wall, and Sorensen, nice pass back to Noble, putting it up front, intercepted there. Kroll trying to tee it up, but it was knocked away just as she tried to shoot. Back across now for Meister. Oh my and gosh. here comes Shaver, a breakaway up the middle. Shaver scores! Her second straight, and it's four to two. Oh my gosh, what happened here? Shaver rolling in all alone, came in off of change, got the puck in the middle, and just went right down the guts. Good move there, pulled it across, and got it in on the right hand side. Quick move there and back over. Boy, how did she get that open? The defense got caught up the ice, I guess. It was almost kind of one of those stealth plays, like, okay, where did <laughs> where did she <laughs> enter the rush here? Well, they just made a line change and she was coming across. It was a nice play on her part, but the pass by the defense, so seeing that, that broke her free. The defense got caught flat-footed, it looked like, for Maple Grove, so giving them a really crucial two-goal lead here with 4.50 left. Meister made that pass. She gets the assist. Shaver second in a row. Oh, Isetta looking for more. Turn around, try here, knocked down. And the Crimson coming back with a chance for a two-on-one. Here's Wendy looking for Thibodeau, oh, and they never got a shot as they got back, and again, a little bit lacking in aggression in terms of thinking shot. You can't have a three-on-two or a two-on-one there and not come away without a decent shot, Jay, when your two goals down. Comes out front, Thibodeau a hack at it, and now Wyzetta will get possession. And floated down the ice, and it's going to get there for icing. We'll come back into the Trojan zone. 4.02 remaining in the third and a 4-2. to two. Here's another look at how this one develops. Meister ah. and there's Shaver. And yeah, you see oh, that definitely got caught in a slow change there. Yep. 
was like, where is, you know, you looked up and where are the black jerseys? Shaver, they didn't really do anything that out of the ordinary. She just diagonally cut through center ice there. Yeah, he's made a quicker line change than maybe yeah, that, that's did. about it. <laughs> Sometimes those little things, I mean, that oh. matters an awful lot. Send them throwing it in and a huge collision there. Pushed out front, they tried to go to Sorensen and it missed and it's all the way back into Wyzetta's zone. Marcy way out for a skate in the corner. Senden, pressure there, and it gets loose. Wyzetta has to be careful. You don't get too comfortable with this two-goal lead. Pass ahead, Sorensen trying to fight through. Sorensen ends up winning that puck. Got it to Shaver. Back to Kroll, and then it bounces alongside the net. Herdeen, floating one for Josephson up the middle. Trojans again get there. Bang and sending it to, and uh, trying to get it out there with Sorensen. Didn't quite do it though. Maple Grove changing up though, so there's a little room to work with. Klein banking it ahead for Bangan. Under three minutes to play here. Try to bring it out front. Intercepted there. Meister stepping up aggressively to take it though for Wyzetta. And then the pass behind its target. Leininger keeping possession for the Trojans. And then Thibodeau sticks it back out to center, but Meister is there. Meister is swinging a miss. Got a second crack at it, though, and they get it out. And Leininger will send it on in. And you haven't seen Moisetta do too much of that swing and a miss at all tonight. You have seen Maple Grove do it a lot tonight. Turnover, near turnover there for Maple Grove would have really salted this away if they'd been able to score there. Well, and I would suspect here pretty soon, too, they're going to have to start thinking about a timeout, and maybe they're going to start thinking about pulling their goaltender here. They want to do it with about minute 40 left if they can, because they've got to get two goals. Yeah, it's so different when you need two instead of just one. Yep. Battle for it here. And Wyzetta first to it again. Uh, Sarah Iyer held off Thibodeau. Minute 35, okay. Francis there to the go. bench. Extra attacker on for Maple Grove. Trojans trying to get control. Larson is oh tripped up. Probably coming against Wyzetta as Heising will go for a trip. Oh, we've got one for each, it looks like. All right, Maple Grove's getting a penalty as well. A rough. I did not see that at first. A rough and a hook. Bald, Laney Baldwin of Maple Grove goes for roughing. Okay, I think we're going to see a timeout yeah. here, yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, why is that? They've, they've used their strength. They've used their positioning within their system to really get, get the advantage in this game, Jay, as we've seen throughout the whole thing, and they've continued. Plus, the way they run that penalty kill, they're just very aggressive. They don't give you a chance to set up. They don't give you a chance to really get, get rolling with it. Maple Grove now, they've got us really put this thing together um, and get some shots on goal. Fanciness isn't going to work here. You need to get that rubber on the net as quickly as you possibly can and get as many of your black jerseys there as quickly as you can. you got to get two goals. You can't get just one. So you've got to really force the issue and not get fancy about it. Pound away, pound away, pound away. They'll call it a hook on Heising, not making much difference either way, but just for the record there. So Marcy hasn't been tested as much as the Crimson goaltenders, but has been solid in goal, obviously, yes. and a good smile for her. But not over yet. Well, she's going to, I'll guarantee she's going to get tested again before the game's over. What a great opportunity. She hasn't had a chance to play that much. And here in the section game, she's been able to contribute. Off the draw. Wyzetta won it initially, but then Grove got it. Now back out to center. And flipped on in by the Crimson here. 
Empty net for Maple Grove as they're down two, trying to see if they can't get back at it. And Wyzetta will dump it all the way down the ice. That's an icing. I'm not sure if they didn't realize the situation here where we're equal strength and a bit well, of a mistake there by the Trojans, but hopefully that'll remind them. <laughs> We go under a minute to play here. Wyzetta leading by two. Maple Grove, the pass comes out front. They jab at it. And Marcy keeps it out of the net. Lots of bodies, but did not go in. Good defense, but exactly what Maple Grove needs to do. Got it right out in front right away. Marcy did a nice job blocking that up with a stick. They still got a shot at it, and then, and then just went to the net. That's exactly what Maple Grove's got to do. Her teammates rally around her a little bit there. Still plenty of time here now. Centering pass there, turnaround try is knocked down. Meister able to fight it out of the zone. An empty net to aim at, and they're offside. Oh. Meister, though, good job to make sure she got over the center line there, not yes. ice that puck. It's tempting to take a shot at the net, but it was the, the right play, obviously, there to keep going. Yeah, and the great thing, Jay, she wasn't even looking to do it, but if she could have just kind of popped it in there a little quicker, got it down deep. But they're okay with this. Nice play. Tampa sending it ahead. Thibodeau, nice tip to Larson, but then knocked away by Klein. And they get it back out to center. Senden. Senden. Here's Leininger up with it. Trying to use up some more of that time. Even more than being worried about trying to score on an in into an empty net there. Oh, just real smart play. Just ragging it, ragging it, ragging it, ragging it, ragging it. Nice play. Senden. Putting it out front. Time ticking down, and it is Wyzetta advancing to the semifinals with a 4-2 to win. Good job by the Trojans, showing a good defense. We talked about their specialty teams, which did an outstanding job. Shorthanded goal. Um, played very well, deserved to go on. Maple Grove. Out physical, Jay. Just weren't quite big enough or strong enough right now. And I think that was the biggest difference. And it took them off their game a bit. I think they were making mistakes that they didn't normally make. Um, but my gosh, with the age of this team, the future looks extremely bright for the Crimson. They are going to be somebody to be reckoned with here in the next few years. So congratulations to a successful season for them. And we got Wazetta and Hopkins. Yeah, we said uh, either way, a really good hockey team was going to have their season ended today, and it uh, doesn't take away from the great run that Maple Grove had. Ten wins in a row to end the year. Yeah. Second place in the Northwest Suburban by just one point. So uh, congratulations to Coach Potter and all of uh, the players this year for the Crimson. And we will be back to wrap things up and hear from the Trojans here in just a moment. Why Zeta 4, Maple Grove 2, our final here in the 6 AA Girls Hockey Quarterfinals. Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. National studies show that students who participate in activities like music, sports, and drama not only have better grades and attendance, but they develop the character to handle adversity, the grace to accept defeat, and the self-confidence to start over. Take part. Get set for life. And 
And welcome back here to Parade Ice Garden as the Wyzetta Trojans are moving into the semifinals here in Section 6 with a 4-2 to two win over Maple Grove. And joined by a couple of the Wyzetta players, starting with Sophia Shaver, a couple goals for you and mm -hmm. clutch goals. Uh, how much fun was this game to be a part of here? It was a lot of fun. We finally pulled it together at the end of the season to get those to get that first section win we haven't had in a really long time. Yeah, it's something that I'm sure you guys didn't want to dwell on, but it's been a tough thing to get out of the first round here. Did you talk about it at all, or was it more like, okay, let's not bring it up? Uh, we talked about it. We knew that this was going to be a tough section to get out of, so our first game was going to be really important. So we worked really hard in practice over the week, and we were ready for this game. I thought you guys really dominated the second period, but they got that one late to make it 2-2, two to two, but did that make you guys just even more determined to, to dominate the third as well? Yeah, it made us extra determined because we knew that we did not want to win the, or lose this game. So we want to get extra goals. I know you've got Hopkins coming up. It's obviously a team you're real familiar with. What kind of a game do you expect that to be? What will it take for the Trojans to come out on top? We know they're a really fast team, but we're going to try to match their speed and use our depth to try to win. All right, congratulations. Great Thank performance you. here, Sophia. And Paige Marcy uh, getting tested in net, and uh, it seemed like right from the opening faceoff of this game, it was really intense. And uh, how much fun for you at your end of the rink was it to, to be in there battling with the Crimson? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Like, anytime you get a lot of shots, I mean, it's great. It's an intense game when you're fighting hard like that for three periods. It's just a lot of fun to play. Both of your teams play on an Olympic rink during the season, but you come into parade. It's a little smaller thing. Does it, could you? sense that a little bit that it changed anything or, or how did you feel like your team handled that part of it? Oh yeah definitely it, I mean it's a lot different playing on an Olympic rink to like a regular size rink but you know we on, when we're on the road all the time it's always a smaller rink so you know we adjust well and um, two of our three rinks at Plymouth Ice Center are you know regular size so you know we practice on B on occasion and you know so we adjust well. You got a, a team that has a lot of strong players, a physical team, and I thought as much as anything that one won the game for you guys. That you were just a little bit stronger on the pocket. Is that a good feeling as a goaltender, knowing that you got some people that'll take care of business in front of the net for you too? Oh yeah, definitely. Like anytime they can clear it out, I mean, it's a lot of weight off my shoulders, and you know, it's a hard-fought battle. And whenever you play well, it's just you know, everyone feels a lot better. It's great. Is it a big sigh of relief to kind of get out of this first round after, you know, not just, you know, the current players, but the past players that have had trouble doing that for Wyzetta? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been on this team for a while and, you know, not winning a section game for a long time. You know, it's, it's kind of hard, but to finally get it my senior year, it's great. Congratulations. Good performance here tonight, Paige. Thank you. All right, Wyzetta winning it over Maple Grove tonight, 4-2. to two, And, again, they'll get Hopkins in the semifinals coming up right back here at Parade Ice Garden coming on Wednesday night, and we'll have that one for you on 12 Sports as well. For Dan Ficken and all of our crew, I'm Jay Wilcox. Hope you've enjoyed this one. The final once more, Wyzetta 4 and Maple Grove 2.